Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote, and we're going to talk briefly about IP addresses. The way that you manage IP addresses is at the network level. Oh, this is my camera network level, obviously. I have it set to a specific VLAN because I have I want all my cameras segmented from the other devices on the network. The network is set up using the section here where the um, gateway IP, which is in this case a UDM Pro, but it could be a USG. This is no different between the two of them. Uh, on the 192.168.10.x subnet, you'll sometimes you'll see that written as 10 slash 24. Sometimes you'll see it 10.1 and then a uh, subnet mask, which is the bit down at the bottom. So basically you get the space from 192.168.10.1 all the way through to 192.168.10.254. The USG or any USG or UDM Pro both can act as a DHCP server. And here is where you would set up the range for the network or for the IP addresses that it's going to se send out or allocate to devices on the network. Um, you don't have to use the USG or UDM Pro to manage IP addresses, but unless you have a really good reason not to, it's a lot easier to do it this way. It's a good idea to leave some space somewhere in the range for devices with static IPs, and depending on your network needs, you'd want to decide how many addresses you think you need to, all you need to save for static IPs, and then make sure that you set your range accordingly. I'm not going to need more than a few, so I usually either go with 6 or 10 or something like that for the uh, starting number here. Any device that's set up for DHCP should, when it's connected to this network, get an IP address. And if I go to my client's network here, you can see, or my client's tab, you can see that I have all of my cameras here in that 192.168.10.x space. It's relatively easy, and I don't generally assign static IPs to the vast majority of clients on the network. It's just a little bit of setup headache that isn't really doesn't really get me anything. If I want to give a device an IP address and have it always be that IP address, I usually use what's called a static DHCP assignment. And to do that, it's pretty easy. You just click on the device that you want to assign one of these, go to the configuration section, open up network, and then select used fixed IP address. And from now on, whenever this device, and it's based on the MAC ID, whenever this device connects to the network, it will get this address. So it will always be 192.168.10.141. So that's super easy and it's done. If for some reason you did want to assign static IPs to a device like my DNS server, I give that a static IP because it's a server for one and two, um, Pi-hole doesn't like it when you don't give it a static IP. So I do do that, but that's, um, I use Ubuntu Linux for that. So that's kind of beyond the scope of this walkthrough. If, if you do want me to explain how to do a static IP on Ubuntu or Windows or whatever, I can make a video about that, but it's uh, dependent on the device or on the operating system or the device type. Uh, I did want to talk a little bit about the camera though. So the cameras you log into using the IP. So in this case, let's take this one, 192.168.10.99. And to log into that, you just open it in the browser. You do need the device password. And you get that from your Protect or Unify NVR, uh, Unify Video NVR software. And there's just a section somewhere in there that shows the device password and then you know obviously it's blanked out here so you click on reveal and then you can copy it and paste it in here and then log in so to set the ip address for the camera you would go to the network section click to static and then enter in whatever you want it to be and in my case because i've only save the space from 192.168.10.2 through 192.168.10.5. I either give it 2, 3, 4, or 5 in this last bit here. The net mask, you generally want to leave that alone unless you've manipulated the net mask. 
but it, you that's a more advanced topic so let's not get into that you do need to set in up all of this stuff so in this case it's that 192.168.10.1 that we saw over here as the the gateway and then we would also want to set the gateway IP in this case to the for the DNS server and then you would save it and then you'd be done and that's really all there all all there is to it um, I think that covers all of the the ways that you would use IP assignment with the unify setup if I missed something or if you have a question about how this works or something I didn't answer, just drop it below and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thanks.